Hello everyone, it's me, Juan Gamer 54 in another video in another video and today I'm pretty sure I already released a video about, you know, thanking MadPad for everything. And you know, since March 9th is basically where MadPad's gonna be walking off in the sunset, basically you're basically now witnessing the MadPad appreciation run. In which we're gonna be reacting to the videos that he is doing before he retires. So, yeah, so do expect this to be a series of sort. Probably will get itself a playlist. But anyways, what a, so let's start with a great, a great way to start with FNAF. Because it's food theory, I fixed the FNAF cookbook. So, without further ado, let's do this. Make sure you like the video and subscribe if you're going to enjoy this content. And let's go. Nowadays it feels like everyone and their mothers has a cookbook coming out. From celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Maddie Matheson to food tubers like Marion Gatsby and Maddie Matheson. But it's not ah. just people who are getting their share of the cookbook pie. Intellectual properties like Sonic and Harry Potter, they're all Sonic too? Jotting down I mean, I know. Easy cash flow. And as if Five Nights at Freddy's didn't make enough money this past year, they also decided to release a cookbook back in October. Now, obviously, as one of the foremost FNAF connoisseurs here on YouTube, I had to get my hands on it to dig for information that I could potentially use in a video but boy oh boy what i found was worse than i could have ever imagined they what? released an incomplete product so what i taking it upon myself to fix their book for them by creating three new recipes but in the process i'm also going to change the cookbook game forever by using the greatest ingredient that i have in my kitchen Lore. all right hello internet welcome to food theory the show that bites off exactly what it can chew so in case you missed it a day ago over on game theory i made the big announcement that on march 9th i'm gonna be uploading the final theory with me as host i explain why i'm doing this and i get all wet and sloppy about it over there but the long and short of it is that i now get 10 final episodes of me hosting these channels before i eventually fade off into the sunset and so what don't better remind way is there me for me to kick off my final block of programming than by paying tribute to freddy and the gang cooking up some of their delicious recipes straight out of the recently released FNAF cookbook. Okay, I know I'm pausing here and I really shouldn't, but I don't know. I've been thinking of getting the FNAF cookbook and who knows? I might probably cook. I mean, I do have expertise on cooking. I mean, shoot, I work at a restaurant. I mean, I work at a restaurant and, you know, I tend to cook for myself for breakfast. So, uh, I don't know if you guys are interested in seeing a cooking episode, let me know. Let me know. Except there's one problem. This thing, it is woefully inadequate. I mentioned it before, but while I comb through the pages of the book for things to talk about, I noticed that there were three characters notably absent from its pages. Honestly, how I was able to make it past the editors and publishers without any sort of second thought is beyond me. First, we have ourselves the elusive Golden Freddy. I mean, come on, this guy's been all the internet has talked about when it comes to the lore of this series for years. Yep. He's the iconic thumbnail guy. The fact that he is not here is a travesty. The second face on this proverbial milk carton is purple guy william afton himself apparently he'll always come back unless it's doing recipes that are inspired by him but ha. there was one other character that was missing that shocked me to my core a character so crucial to this franchise that it's a crime not to have included them i looked at every recipe and not one made mention of the most important animal oh, no. in the FNAF universe my boy let's go music man no but who knows yeah like music man Let's just see what they chose to include instead, shall we? All right. Hippo's crispy fish bites. Wow, one rambling monologue gets him in over the main antagonist of the franchise. What Dang. Else? Uh, Ballora's salmon burger. That's more of a reach than most of my theories. I mean, ha. don't get me wrong. The connections between Mr. Hippo and fish bites are tenuous at best. Sure, the character is a fan favorite. He says the word fish twice. Clearly, there's enough here for a recipe, I suppose. But Ballora, yeah, she has nothing to do with burgers or salmon. No. Nope. even try to make an excuse for it in the description of the recipe either they didn't incorporate her colors at all instead nope. there's a mega mango salad because you know obviously Ballora, the character from sister location is in the mega pizza plex not she was in circus baby's pizza <clears throat> world not anything related to the word mega oh boy i, I mean well there was a glam rock in the books but uh hey i mean what do i know 
definitely have my work cut out for me on fixing this mess. So today, Santi and I put our minds to work on concocting three recipes that'll perfectly capture the essence of these three characters. Oh, no, nah, not the William special. Book. And we're not just going to be making generic recipes and slapping the characters' names in the titles. Oh, no, my friends, you know me. You know that I care more than that. Today, we are going to be challenging the idea of IP cookbooks as a whole. Historically, these cookbooks based on popular games or movies, they generally go in one of two possible ways. All right. One is they have a cute little hint as to the character, like Sonic having a chili dog. Haha, <laughs> we all get the reference. But more often than not, they just go with option two, choosing recipes that have absolutely nothing to do with the character, like the Pikachu lemon tarts. See, it's yellow. Yay. And of course, because ah. these things are meant to be the most shameless of cash grabs, seldom, if ever, are they taking the character's ambitions, their likes, their dislikes, their lore into the essence of the recipe, into consideration of what makes them edible. And so that, my friends, that is our true goal of today. To not just okay. make a dish for a character, but to truly turn a character into a dish. We're going to elevate the cookbook game in a way that only food theory can. All right. Hit that subscribe button and make sure to share these recipes. This won't be the last time that we do it either. So without any further ado, Santi. Hey, Matt. What's up? Let's start with the recipe for Music Man. Show me what you got. Hmm. All right. Challenge accepted. What can you tell me about it? You don't know Music Man? Do you, do you exist on these channels? <laughs> of course I do. I just wanted to see what you know. Well, even though he's a personal favorite character of mine, we don't really know all that much about him. We know that he's a DJ in Security Breach. Yeah. We even see him with his mixer in game. In Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, we also find out that he hates loud noises. He's also got a bunch of fun colors worked into his design, like purple and pink and green. So maybe we could do some with that. That being said, I know what happened the last time you tried incorporating color into a dish so uh no need to harp on that one if it's too difficult too soon still hurtful gonna roll right past it and okay he's a dj so what if we incorporated a round record-like shape into the dish then okay we weird mishmash of flavors like a dj mixing music up i'm thinking a taco let's do a what? taco with a soft shell because you know he doesn't like loud noises so he wouldn't be a big fan of the crunch right? ah, okay. and we'll do a non-traditional filling like a sweet and sour chicken to remix a regular taco some cilantro and scallions as a garnish for those green hues but here's the kicker we're gonna to make the tortillas pink with some dragon fruit that'll tie what? It together and really make it music man so with the rough idea in place santi and i are going to both attempt these dishes but from opposite ends of the country then we're going to compare the results to see how close our dishes wound up and immediately off the bat we noticed how oddly colored our tortilla was turning out basically if you took a scab and crossed it with a food item i mean that's, that's what we've that is that's what we're we, looking at right now that's what we've created here today ladies and gentlemen and manually pressing tortillas it's no easy task let me tell you all right so We've got our spinning Music Man discs, purple colored in honor of him. That's complete yeah. with the dragon fruit. Let's add in some of our sweet and sour chicken there. Pre-sauced. I'm just going to cut them up. Easily biteable tacos going on here. Because again, it's the Music Man. We've got ourselves a flavor. Rope, 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 remix. Sup, <laughs> kids. Let's have our soft shell tacos, shall we? Okay. We've got some dragon fruit. Stop. Yeah, let's get that in there. Which again, that's going to help. Choices are being made. Strong choices. You got some green onion? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if I want the. I don't, I don't think I want the Music Man taco, to be honest. Green purple, where green is sometimes the good characters and purple is very often the bad characters. Oh. Music Man is a true neutral, a merging of those two points. Green meets purple. I like that. I think that's very symbolic. What was the dragon fruit? <laughs> The <laughs> awkward side. Ah! Cool tacos! <laughs> <laughs> so, how'd it go for Joe? My God! What happened? What do you mean, what happened? What, what did yours look like? Oh! Oh! oh wow. So it's not supposed to look like severed flesh. No! Uh, maybe it tastes better than it looks? What? That's great! I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Only the best for music, man. Only the best for my best boy. Music! Man. Yeah. So that one actually tasted pretty darn good despite it looking like a human scab. Now we just have to follow it up with Golden Freddy, which is no easy feat. Golden Freddy has been a mysterious character throughout the entirety of the franchise. Yes, he At this has. Point, we're pretty sure that the animatronic was possessed by two spirits. Indeed. Cassidy, who was brutally murdered by Afton, and the crying child, who fell victim to the bite of 83. We believe that the crying child spirit was eventually put to rest during the Happiest Day minigame, mm -hmm. but Cassidy, the vengeful spirit, remains, hell-bent on revenge for what William Afton did to them, yep. as well as all the other murdered children. 
Yikes. Okay, Golden Freddy is sort of a twist on the original Freddy. So we're going to take the pizza from the pizzeria and flip it on its head. Or, more accurately, fold it in half. I think a calzone's the Holy. only way to go. Some good cheese and sauce, much to Stephanie's chagrin. That's not a calzone. You've immediately... Golden calzone. I feel like that's all right. Because strombolis are rolled. And sure, traditionally calzones don't have sauce, but that's in the past. Calzones nowadays can absolutely have sauce. Gosh, Stephanie, first the paprika, now this. I mean, you're still missing the ricotta cheese. Uh, trust me, Steph's family is very Italian. I don't really care. A folded or rolled pizza is delicious no matter what. I'm just saying that if I don't remind you that calzones have ricotta cheese, I'm going to be disowned from that entire side of my family. <laughs> Regardless of what you call it, this folded over pizza will give the Golden Freddy dish a beautiful golden crust. It's on theme. And for the vengeful spirit, let's give it a nice little spicy kick. Some spicy pepperoni and extra herbs in the sauce. Oh, no, I can't do it. The good spirit inside there, the crying child spirit. Probably something sweet. Oh, please don't say it. Maybe some... Please, no. Pineapple? I'm fine. It's fine. Let's do it. Sweet and spicy. <laughs> that pineapple. Okay, this is a lot of depth. He's gonna be a thick boy. The thickest. That's also part of the lore of Golden Freddy, obviously. He's a, he's a thick boy? He's a thick boy. There's no ricotta. It's, there's no Where's ricotta. Where's the ricotta? There's no ricotta. Where? This is feta! This is feta! I know you're gonna love this next part, which is where we add in some oil. Yeah, that's fair. Some garlic. Uh-huh. Uh yeah, and then some sauce. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. So what we have here is the golden. This is making me hungry. I, this is not fair. I, 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 why do I do this to myself? What we've done is we've spiced it up a little bit. We've added in a little bit more here to make it a bit spicier. Because at the end of the day, remember, Golden Freddy is stuffed, presumably with the spirits of two kids. The silver lining is that at the end of the day, you're gonna bite into this, and it's gonna be. A delicious big old bite of 83. Can't this be one of the other ones that we just feed to our team? Once again, it would seem that our differences in culinary skill are showing because uh, Santi's looks ooey, gooey, and delicious. <laughs> mm. Ironically, I would taste Mine that. Stuff's, though. Uh, Ooh. Freddy's a loaf. Golden Freddy. More like Golden Bready. Here. Look more accurate. Here, let's try this one. I want to see if this one looks any better. Oh, mine's a little better. Hey! hey! I God dang it, y'all make, making me hungry! Like Golden Freddy, I want to eat outside. it! He's pretty unpredictable once you get on the inside, though. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy. Two souls in one. Spite. Nom. I have no idea what I'm eating. But it doesn't necessarily taste bad. There's a lot going on in there. Just like when you have two spirits merged into one body. Having to figure out how they work together. <laughs> Poor oh, Stephanie. Done. Nailed it. More accurate. You can saw the face. Time to move on to the grand finale, the purple guy. And for this one, we've got to go big or go home. I mean, this is the main antagonist of the. <sighs> okay. <sighs> what do we have to give for Mr. O. Willie A. himself? I really want to know what dish is supposed. What evil dish do we have conspire for this man? franchise he always comes back and we want people to always come back for bites this is the recipe that can change how people approach ip cookbooks forever so we've got to make this one right i got you plus i had tom give me the lowdown while you were cooking so i'm all caught up since this guy is also purple he's not purple he's not dang it tom i'm definitely gonna get him back for that <laughs> what do we got then well, obviously william afton's the big bad of the franchise yes he's called purple guy because he appears purple while hiding in the shadows but william is also more than just a purple guy He's intelligent. He's a brilliant roboticist. He's cunning. He's pretty much the entire reason that this franchise exists. Pretty so much, dies yes. A couple times throughout the series. Once by getting spring locked in his own animatronic suit, and then after he survives that one, he gets burned down multiple times. At least twice. Nowadays, he's presumed dead, with his consciousness just living on as part of an AI learning program. Not sure what we can do with all that when it comes to making food. Matt, I got this. First, we're gonna go with a double fried steak sandwich. Just okay. like Afton. Frying the steak once isn't gonna be enough. We want it nice and crisp. But I Ooh. love his first death. Getting spring locked with your blood spilling out of your own suit? Hardcore! So as our homage to that, we're gonna place a fried egg in this sandwich that will burst and ooze out as soon as we spring lock it between two deliciously toasted sourdough slices. And for the okay. purple, let's make a sweet and spicy blackberry habanero sauce to take this dish to the next level as a perfect tribute. We've also got some purple onion that we're just gonna sprinkle on to... I think the purple onions would bit. have to do oh, no matter... Even if I don't like also, onions, I, I would... Rather choose that than you know, purple sauce. I'm looking confused, 
<laughs> just like the FNAF floor confuses me. It's so perfect. Egg okay. one is going in for the drop. Egg two is going in. Nice. Oh, Two eggs. They look, they look legitimate. Oh. Gotta admit, the spring lock, it worked perfectly. Spring lock that serial killer. Whoo! Oh, good squish. The sandwich itself took us a minute to wrap our heads around. Oh. Hold up. Need another bite. But once we did, we were fans. The second bite's better. The sauce is actually what helps pull things together. It is. The crispy outer coating is great. You're making the me hungry. Put it. The egg adds just a slight <laughs> bit of making me hungry. Egg. This the is not fair. adds the right crunch. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I kind of think this is a really good sandwich. Oh, but let me tell you, this bad boy was crunchy. I think we can all agree that a softer bread might have been easier to bite through and could help absorb that yolk a bit more. But overall, this recipe came together just really well. Even the sauce, which I was doubtful of at first, it did wonders for the assembly of the dish. That is... A strange mouthful. It really just goes to show you that a dish is greater than the sum of its parts. Because once we took a bite out of the whole thing, it came together well, red onions included. So, there you have it, friendos. Three delicious recipes that do our three underrepresented icons of the franchise justice. justice. Also, I just want to call it out there, way more delicious than anything else in this cookbook. Even if wow. Wow. Off-putting. Not only have we fixed and completed their book for them, but we've crafted each recipe as an homage and embodiment of the character that they're based off of. No slapdash recipes that have nothing to do with the characters. No vague nods that clearly show that you tried ham fisting the characters into a pre-made recipe. Instead, yeah. we carefully considered every possible aspect of the character and translated that into edible form. And not only that, but a delicious edible form. You see, that. that's the best thing about what we've done here today. By using the lore inherent to these characters, by using the rich detail of of them in the source material, we brought together unique recipes that go way past your traditional burger or pizza recipe. Which is honestly what all of these cookbooks should be striving to do. You have all these amazing characters and world details, but you're wasting the potential by slapping the names on generic sandwiches. Ah. I know I've dumped on her quite a bit in this episode, but if we were to truly take a look at Ballora, for instance, we'd see that she's a ballerina. Ballet yes. was formalized as a dance form in France. Ballet is delicate, it's classy, it's soft and light, it screams for something like a Madeleine. But you can't just forget her rosy cheeks and iconic pearls either. Those okay. are important parts of her design. So we'd want to make these Madelands complete with rose water incorporated for a unique flavor, as well as sprinkling on some edible pearls for a crunch that balances out the airy Madeleine with a bite that shows her true nature. Okay. Maybe we save that for the next time we do an episode like this. Anyway, the point is that yes, do it again. <laughs> characters that we love open up so many opportunities for creative mixes of flavors and styles. Mixes that normally wouldn't fit into the pages of just an average cookbook. That way you're immersed even deeper into the world and finally you can be the one to take a bite out of freddy if you want to see us tackle some more characters from fnaf or honestly some other ip let us know which ones you'd like to see down in the comments below and as always my friends remember it's just a theory a food theory bon appetit all right so that's gonna be the end of the video <laughs> honestly this is so unfair the last video it was all about you know Matt pad just talking about you know did did FNAF kill Chuck E. Cheese? And it's like, okay, I'm not gonna feel hungry about that. This video made me hungry. <laughs> God dang it. Now I gotta go and eat before I get before we get started again. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching for the video. Like the video so I know you guys enjoy. Comment down below. What do you guys think? Do you are you do you think I should tackle food theory a little bit more? I mean, I certainly I certainly enjoyed this video. As always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time.